All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to do to set up Databricks within AWS using the Databricks example providers, and we're going to use Terraform to do this. So here's what we're going to build. This is one of the examples that I'll show you the Terraform in a minute. So what you'll see here, we have a VPC, and this is going to be our Databricks data plane. And then inside of that VPC, we're going to use two availability zones. The entryway into here is going to be an internet gateway. That's how we make this publicly available for our um, data to be able to, or with our, our compute to be able to access data outside for us to be able to connect into it. Um, getting in there, there's gonna be a firewall in this one. So this is to prevent data exfiltration. So this way your users can't say, download the data to their local machine or copy it to a different S3 bucket that is already approved by the network stack. So this way we can make sure that we're monitoring where the data is going. So this firewall is going to allow access to 10.4.0 slash 16. So that will be any local traffic because that's the subnet CIDR that we're going to be using here. And then anything else that's not in that CIDR. So it's, if it doesn't start with 10.4, everything else will go out to the internet. And then what we'll approve here is pypy.org, pythonhosted.org, CRAN R project, and then we're not gonna allow SSH, FTP, or ICMP. And so if we look up here, um, the route table to start inside of this VPC, again, anything starting with 10.4 is gonna be local traffic. Anything 10.4.64 or 96 is going to go into one of these two firewalls. Once we go through that firewall, then we get into our NAT gateway. So this is basically how we allow traffic between these two subnets. So we're going to have Databricks subnet one and Databricks subnet two. And all of these, all of this traffic can either communicate within the subnet or it can jump over across subnets through the NAT gateway. So if I put in anything 10.40 and then a slash 22, anything in that cider will just stay inside of this subnet. But then if I do 10.4.1 from this cluster and it's connecting to here, it, the traffic will go up to this NAT gateway. It'll hit this 10.40 route. And then that's going to tell me that it needs to actually go over to this subnet. And that's how we connect. And then if anything inside of this cluster, like say I want my cluster to install um, pandas from PyPy, it's going to um, route to the 00, zero, which will go up to the NAT gateway and then from there that's going to send it to the firewall and then the firewall will approve it because we have PyPy in here so that's the structure of our networking here and then lastly we're going to have a few endpoints so for this it's going to set up an s3 vpc endpoint so that'll keep the traffic to s3 within our subnet rather than over the internet um, then sts this is going to allow us to track um, what permissions or policies are assigned to the various roles that we have um, Kinesis, so this is if you're connecting the Kinesis data, and then Glue. So you could add more to these if you're using other services that need connect in here, but these are the ones that this example comes with. So here we are in the Databricks GitHub, and then inside of here you'll see they have the provider here. We're going to go into examples. So these are like starting repositories that you can build from. So inside of modules, the examples just calls into modules. So here's all the modules they have. Um, anything starting with ADB is Azure Databricks, and then they have AWS, and then GCP. So whatever provider you're using, they have something here that you can get started with. Um, there's a lot of different things in here. So like here's ADB um, exfiltration protection. So this is like the actual same thing that we're building on AWS here with that firewall preventing data from going out. But this is the Azure version. So the one that we're looking at is the AWS Databricks, uh, AWS Workspace with Firewall down here. So inside of here, you'll see this is the module that builds all of the resources that we actually just went through in that infrastructure diagram. So I'm not going to go through this here. I will leave a link in the description if you want to go more into the module, but we're going to go into how I use the module with my example and then what I've built on top of that. But first, before we do that, if you haven't set up Databricks yet, this is how you're going to do it on your AWS. So if you open up AWS and type in Databricks, what you'll see here, we're using Databricks Intelligence Platform. And then if I open this up, this will be a subscription. So you can do a try for free. It'll give you a 14 day free trial. Um, this charges you by usage. That free trial gives you up to, I think $400 in credits for their DBU credits. And then after that you start paying. So um, we'll get into more of that when we get into the actual environment, but it's basically how much compute you're using. So if you just wanna try this out and do the free trial, even after that expires, it's not gonna cost you anything until you start using and, um, running on the compute. So here is cursor 
And if I go into my main.tf, what you'll see here is our workspace with firewall. And then you'll notice I actually added a cluster in here and we'll get into that after. So here's all the values that I wanted to set. We're gonna need an account ID. And then you'll actually also need, if I open up my versions inside of here, what you'll notice, I have two providers. We'll get into that in a second. We'll need a client ID, client secret and account ID. So these values are sensitive. We created a service principle, which I'll show you how to do. Um, uh, right now you can set them however you want with your secret store so these are all variables inside of my variable file um i just set them as the dot sh environment variables so that that way i could do it locally but if you're using terraform cloud or github actions to deploy um whatever you're using you can set it in your environment that way so i'm not going to show you this file but just know that it sets these values as um, environment variables to be used so back inside my main.tf you'll see we define our cider block for the VPC we're going to build. We define what region this should be in, our whitelisted URLs. So inside of our Terraform TF bars, you'll see I added a few things here as well. So we can reach out to GitHub. We can reach out to Databricks. So a few URLs there. Um, make sure you're setting these web app values. A lot of these were actually in Europe for the example. So I'm using US East 1. So I set them to the same value. So US East 1 and Virginia. Make sure you change that for whatever region you're in. So you're not bouncing regions with those requests. Um, and then I added a few things. We added a product name environment and a product owner. So you can change all of these as you see fit, but um, these are what we're using right now for this kind of example that we're building out. And so then at that point we run this and we build out our workspace and this actually builds the AWS resources that we need. So that whole diagram that we went through, this will build that out. And once that's done, we now have two different areas we can go. So this view is my Databricks account. So inside of here, you'll see we have user management. We have the cloud resources we've built. So I have credentials here that allow Databricks to access into my AWS environment. We have storage configuration. So this is an S3 bucket, and then we link it to our Databricks. And this is all done by that Terraform. So it's really nice. And then our network. So this is that VPC. Um, if I actually open this up, I'll go show you. We go into VPCs. What you'll see here, we've built out this VPC. And here's all those things that we had talked about. So we have all of our subnets. We have our route tables and then our internet gateway. And so that's all linked through this network here. But what we're going to look at, if I go up to workspaces, you'll see we created a workspace now. And this is actually another um, kind of web UI we can go into. So we have our account UI. And then each workspace has its own UI. So this is going to be a custom URL, and then you can assign users to have access within here if you're an admin. And this is where we can actually build out all of our resources. So the nice thing is that Amazon and Databricks connect right into each other. So I can now, because I'm an admin with access to build out compute, I don't even need access to AWS, but it authenticates with that credential that we showed that can build there. So if I wanted to create a compute, I could go in here, press create compute, go ahead and select everything that I need to make it um, whatever policy I want. So I could build personal, which would be just for my own access, select everything you want, and then go through and you'll see here, it gives you a bunch of options and these actually build out in EC2. So what I'll show you quickly, we're not going to build a new compute, but I'll show you the one that we currently have. So inside of EC2, what you'll see here, um, no instances currently running in the North Virginia region. So let's go back into our computes and what you'll see, I have one here. It's just not online. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. And so we do have a policy on here to terminate after 20 minutes. So that way that we're saving costs, it's only in use while it's running. So we have this spinning up now and here are all of the values that it's going to create based off. So this is going to create a little cluster that is a spark cluster for us to run jobs on. I'm not going to run any jobs right here, but we'll see that get built. So I was actually in the wrong account. So unfortunately it didn't show, but what you'll see now inside of this EC2, we do have a few others that are currently running, but here are the two instances we just spun up. So there's two initializing at I4I larges and they're currently being created. So while it's initializing, we're gonna go back and I'll show you how we authenticated with our Terraform. So if we go into our console in the account console, go into user management, here are our users. I'm going to go over to service principles and what you'll see here is we created a service principle. So this is how we authenticate with our Terraform so that it's not based off a user. So what you'll want to do, add a service principle, I'm going to call it test, go ahead and add it. And then you'll get a UUID 
And then OAuth secrets, you can go ahead and generate a secret. I'm going to say it lasts one day. And there's our secret. So now we have our client ID and our secret ID. What we want to do from there, go into your environment. And that's where we have these values set in here. So what that actually comes out to, though, is in our versions.tf, we now have two providers. So we have our account provider, which is how we actually um, create the workspace. And then we have our workspace provider. So you'll see here, Ernest Dev Workspace. And what you'll see here, the host on this one is accounts.cloud, whereas the host on this one is actually the output of the module. So we are taking the module AWS workspace with firewall and the value Databricks host, and that's our new host. So this one authenticates to Databricks cloud. This one authenticates directly to our workspace. One note here, if you're running a, a secure environment that doesn't have any internet access, you will need some kind of on-premise runner to access this. So that, if that's a problem you're facing, just so you're aware of that. But then you'll see, we now have a client ID, client secret, and account ID. And these are the values of that service principle. So we set the um, ID here, the account ID. All of these values are the same, just the only difference is we're authenticating to a different host. So now what this looks like, we have our Databricks providers. They're all the same, except we have an alias here. So by default, if you haven't used alias providers, everything will use this that is a Databricks resource. So that's why when I come here, no providers specified with an alias. So this is just going to use that default accounts and that's how we create everything in the account and the workspace from there. But then this one, we actually set provider is equal to Databricks.Earnest Dev Workspace. And so that's saying this one should authenticate with the other provider, which is the workspace. And we're going to build an auto scaling cluster from that. So that's how it knows. So if you're managing three different workspaces, say you could have each one with its own named provider and then authenticate that way and build it all from here. Um, if you're doing this multiple environments, I would do that a little bit differently, but that's one option you could do. And so here's the configuration for that cluster we just looked at. So I4I large, just like we saw in EC2, we set our auto termination and that's how we build it out. So now if I go back to here, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this service principle so that it's um, not available and nobody here can authenticate to it, even though it had no roles. But this is the one we're currently using and then go back into our workspace over here. Let's refresh and we should see our compute still spinning, that's interesting. We come over here is it still initializing okay so it says three out of three checks pass so it looks like it's ready um not sure why it's still spinning here but if we give it a little bit more time oh there we go cluster running so our compute is now ready so that's where now we can go ahead and if i go into a notebook um whatever we wanted to run i don't have anything in this notebook right now you'll see here i just did print hello world and it's waiting because it's actually now going to take this notebook and run it on that cluster that we just set up so from there, this is where, whether you're doing it or you have some other data scientists, you could pass this off at this point, assuming you've given your users access, which real quick, just so you know, go into user management, add user, and it's just email and first name, last name. So this authentication is separate from AWS. You can give the users roles. So if I go into my person, go into roles, you'll see I have account admin, marketplace admin, billing admin, and then you can also add users from there into your workspace. So I go into settings up here and then go down to identity and access and then users. You'll see here, I have my user inside of here. And then again, um, what can I do inside of here? So I have everything in here, but this is where you can give them instead of whole account admin, you can also give them workspace admin, or you can just give them SQL access or cluster creation. So some of your users should be able to create clusters, some won't. It depends what type of um, environment you're in, how big the company you're in, who's servicing it. But all of those options are available from within here. So that's gonna wrap up this demo. If you need help setting up your AWS environment in whether it's Databricks or any other resources, things that you've seen on this channel, go ahead and DM me on LinkedIn. I'm gonna have a link in the pinned comment to do so. And otherwise, let me know what other videos you'd like to see on this type of topic or similar.